On February 8th, uh, the day the awakening began, I was in my office working. It was about noon, about an hour after the awakening started. And I looked up in my window. My office looks directly out on the Hughes Auditorium. And I saw a student running his legs off across the yard. I, I wonder, what is he doing running so fast? He ran across the street, ran right into my office, and he shouted out, there's an, a revival breaking out at Hesper University. That was the first time I learned about what God was doing that day. And over the next 16 days, of course, we saw this amazing movement explode across our communities that eventually led between 50,000 and 70,000 people uh, into this little town. I have so many memories of those days. I was here throughout that whole time. I went away on one weekend, but basically I was here a day and night. Uh, I was either at the university or across on this side. Uh, but I have so many memories of lines of people waiting to get into uh, these spaces for worship. It took after the first week when the university decided to restrict the space, originally part of the auditorium, eventually all the auditorium for Gen Z. Everybody over 24 years old had to be hosted by Asbury Seminary. So after a lot of talks with uh, Dr. Brown and the leadership team of the, the Awakening, we decided to open up all of our spaces. We actually used the phrase radical hospitality. I told our team, this is our, our calling to do what we can to be radically hospitable to the university. So we opened up our gymnasium, Estes Chapel, McKenna Chapel. We had five sites, even our cafeteria, five sites eventually were opened up and people were lined up to get into these sites where it was live streamed. It was remarkable. We saw people come to the Lord. We saw so many people repenting of sin, receiving sanctification and forgiveness. It was remarkable. I, I often think that when you look at the videos about the event, they often show people worshiping because we didn't allow people to take videos of the altar, but the altar is where the whole movement actually happened. And what happened at that sacred space was remarkable. I also have a real strong memory of those days meeting with the leadership team and making decisions. There were a lot of decisions. And I just want to say on behalf of Dr. Brown, his team, and people from our side, the seminary, as well as Seedbed, everyone in the room was committed to um, godliness and just asking God to help us make the right decisions to be a steward of that event. There were, of course, hundreds of decisions regarding food and regarding refreshments and security, parking. There was a lot of challenges that went around this event. And it was just such a privilege to find ways to help and to serve in local pastors in our area. I, I could tell you many stories of the way God used just people in this community who came forward to help. I remember one lady came one night, she arrived with her vacuum cleaner, and said God told her to come in and vacuum the floor of this very chapel, and she did before we opened the doors that night. But just to see the eager anticipation of the faces, the, uh, the openness to God's work was truly remarkable. I do remember the day when in our leadership team meeting, I was actually in my office here at the seminary, we met uh, several days that last week, and the Lord really directed us and said, the time has come to move from a come and see to go and tell. It wasn't really a good strategy to tell spiritual needy people around the world to come to Wilmore, Kentucky. It was time to pivot and bring this out to the ends of the earth. And that's what's happened, that those that were here and experienced have gone out all over. And just since uh, the awakening, I've been to Cuba, I've been to Australia, I've been to Singapore, I've been to Bangkok. I went to a big conference in Chicago just for Gen Z. And all those places people ask about, and we spoke about the, about the awakening. And God continues to do great work through that with our, especially our new room and David Thomas and his work where we're following up with collegiate prayer all over the world. And so God in his quiet way is doing a great work among Gen Z. And this one year anniversary of the event is not about remembering something that happened last February. It's about being part of what God continues to do all over the world. One of my favorite memories was actually in Australia. I was giving a lecture uh, to an academic audience about a very particular point of Islamic theology, which is part of my training. I gave this lecture for 45 minutes on something to do with Islam. And we had question and answer afterwards, and it was all academic kind of questions. But the last question was, please tell us about the Asbury revival. <laughs> this was in Australia. I had this experience all over the world. People in Cuba were asking about it. Everywhere we went, people asked about it. And so it just shows the power of, of media, 
to transmit a message and people who share their stories all over the world. So may God continue to bless those who are praying and asking God to do a work in our generation, especially among Gen Z, where God is stirring. And it's just a privilege to have been a part of this and see it in such a small way, what God's doing that only heaven will tell that full, bigger story. Thank you.